a, a show called Star is Born, and she just needed him there. Were you at the time when she was doing Star Wars Born? I was, it was in that era. In that era? Yeah. She was taking a lot of pills then. A lot of pills. She's a fabulous mother. How did she great. handle this on the studio, Fred? <clears throat> to work. She's such a great singer, entertainer. How did she handle it all with all those pills? Well, she, and had, drink? she had a support. She loved her three children. They were everything in the world to her. Mm -hmm. And uh, she loved Manelli. He was a good friend even after the divorce. Mm -hmm. Good friend. A lot of respect and admiration for him. Mm -hmm. uh, a fabulous father mm -hmm. to the kids. And she loved Sid Love. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she just, she, she was just a very fine natural performer. Mm -hmm. And anyone who touched her loved her. She was not, she was not, uh, she was not a Is natural like human a being. sparrow, like a little sparrow, like if you pee off sad. And she was always sad or she had a good... Was that just being... Was she basically sad and... Right? Lonesome. Pardon me? She was lonesome. Lonesome? Yeah. With all those friends? Well... Still lonesome. Are they friends? Are they stargazers? You've know. been around Hollywood how many years, Fred? Oh, Tesh. I mean... I, I got out of the Marine Corps in 1945. Ah, let's start there. Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. You were in the Marine Corps? Yep. When did you become an investigator of... Uh, I mean, uh, policeman? You were one of uh, Hollywood's top... Vice... You got on the Vice? Yep. Hollywood Vice, downtown. Well, I get out of Pershing Marine... Square. Uh, yeah, no, in Hollywood. And oh, going out saying here, homosexual. I book my share. I book my share of fags and lesbians and whores yeah, and picking up fags and gangsters and stopping autos and you know Mickey Collins. Yeah. Why were you doing that at the time at that in that era? Why would anyone pick up homosexuals just uh, and you used to trap them too at the time? Was that just the thing at the time? We just made ourselves available. What do you mean by you made yourself a Well, person? working and working a homosexual in those days was the same as working a prostitute. You know, just, just let it be known that you're available. But you guys had a good time with that sort of thing, <laughs> with homosexuals and prostitutes. You know, well, policemen downtown in L.A. Now they don't do it nowadays. Now I think they're called entrapment. In those days, <clears throat> the laws were a little more loose right. than they are today. In, the, in those days, when I was on a vice squad, uh, we used to drill holes in all the public restrooms at the beach ah. so we could monitor the activities within the bathrooms, the public bathrooms. You're kidding. Yeah, we did it for a reason, though. We did it because there were so many complaints of child molesters when the children would go in and change their, change into their Close. costumes. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, they would be molested by many, on many occasions. So right. we would uh, monitor the ladies' room and the men's room. The ladies' room would be monitored by police women and, and the men's room by men. Yes. And if we saw someone making advances to a child, we would have we would we would arrest them upon leaving the premise. I see. And we'd book them. Okay, I want to get back. So you think that's wrong? Yeah. Well, America. <laughs> I mean, America. I, I don't know you if think it's wrong, it's wrong or not. To book no. Yes, I think <laughs> okay. no. I think that's right. That's right. You know, no, in those days, let me tell you something. In those days, when you booked uh, a, a prostitute, yeah. By law, she took a, a blood test. And if she had a venereal disease, she never got free until she was cured. Really? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So but today, it doesn't happen that way. They can, today, have AIDS. <clears throat> they can have AIDS and walk you down the street right. and, and pass that all A lot on. of minuses and pluses in what we did in those days. We, we, uh, we worked uh, mainly uh, whores that, uh, that preyed on servicemen because they used to get them drunk and rolling. And I was the next Marine, and I just came back from the Pacific in the right. war. And uh, we were assigned to that detail because we were sort of gung-ho. We didn't want people taking advantage of GIs or uh, sailors or Marines who had served their country, came back to the States with a few bucks, and have some pimps or whores to take their money. Fred Otesh, private investigator. After you left the Hollywood Vice, what happened? Tell me, you got your own... Uh, I discovered, got discovered by... <laughs> who discovered Fred Otesh? Jerry Geisler. Gary? How, how did he discover And Howard him? Hughes. Howard Hughes. Yeah. How? What well, happened? Uh, there was a case, a couple of friends of mine uh, arrested Bob Mitchum for ah, the marijuana. Yeah. That's right. And I was not involved in that, but a couple of friends of mine were Rudy Diaz and John O'Grady, who's a very fine private investigator now in Hollywood. Uh -huh. And uh, Jerry Geisler was the attorney for, uh -huh. for Hughes at that time and for Bob Mitchum. So he called me up and asked me if I'd come to his office and see uh, and review the arrest. 
and of, see of Robert Mitchum. Yes, and see if the if I thought that there was some loophole of which they could pursue. Uh -huh. And what that really meant was, can you get to someone to kill the case? You know. Uh -huh. And so, <laughs> so I said, well, uh, let me look into it. So I looked into it, and I talked to John O'Grady and Rudy Diaz. Right. And Rudy Diaz today is works security at the Hollywood Palladium. So he's still Which you to, used to own. Yeah. Well, yeah I, go ahead. I was the general manager of you. Yeah. Right. So uh, I looked at them, and, and I said, look, do you, you think that uh, this is a weak case or a strong case? And they said, it's a very strong case. Well, don't talk to us about it, okay? Right? Yeah. And Mitchum got convicted. And... Uh, Went to jail, as you know. But that helped his career a little, didn't sure it? Did. Sure did. Didn't it, Fred? Sure did. People say no. That Hughes helped. Loved it. Hughes loved it. Yeah. And Hughes didn't try too hard to get him off the hook either. Because uh -huh. he saw the value in the publicity. Right. So, anyway, with the, as you know, he got convicted and went to jail. And about two or three years later, Hughes remembered uh, that I was sort of untouchable, you know. Right. That I didn't pursue what he wanted me to pursue. Mm -hmm. So I started working for him through Greg Botzer and through Jerry Geisler. Hmm. Yeah. Marilyn Monroe, Kennedy, tell me. People say she was murdered. Fred Otesh, wow. you're going to sit there and Mother you're going to tell me she wasn't. Is that right? I don't believe it either. Oh. Accident? I think it was an accident. It wasn't I, suicide. I was very much involved. No, I didn't, tell me. I didn't think she intended to kill herself. What do you think? Not a bit. Oh, well, I just me. think she was depressed. She felt used and abused by, by the Kennedys, first being Jack and then Bob. And uh, being passed around like a piece of meat. And I was she really passed like yes, a piece of meat? Yes, yes, yes. Joe DiMaggio and all? Well, Joe DiMaggio was the only man I know that really loved her. Really? Yeah, really loved her to this day, probably. Uh -huh. He's a very fine man. He is a fine man. Yes, he is. He really is. Marilyn, like a little girl. Well, tell me about I her. knew her when she was married to a policeman named Doherty. Oh, you did? Yeah, sure. And uh, I went a long way back with her. And Sidney Scolsey was her best friend. Mm -hmm. And she and I, Sidney, would, yeah. uh, would uh, get together occasionally at her apartment on Holloway <clears throat> and have a few laughs. But uh, all she ever really wanted was a good husband. <laughs> you know, all she ever really wanted was a husband and, and a family uh -huh. and someone to, uh, to share uh, her life with her. She really wanted a family and a baby, too, yeah, didn't she? Sure. You said Holloway. Shelley Winters lived with her in Holloway. Is that is that when Shelley lived here? Yes. On Holloway? And Burt Lancaster came into the uh, in the house, broke in? Is that, <laughs> is that the crazy night yeah. of uh, Burt Lancaster Probably and Shelley Winters? So. Also, Robert Crawford lived there. Oh, did he? Yeah. <clears throat> You've been around Hollywood for several, several years. You've I traveled was. all over the world with these great stars. Yep. Who are some of the best cases you think you remember? Who are some of them? Funny Who, cases? Yeah. Errol Flynn, he called me up one night. He said, listen, I'm in jail. You better come and get me. I said, why? He said, I got accused of stealing a policeman's badge. I said, are you serious? Uh -huh. So he was at the photographer's ball. Uh -huh. And there was a beautiful girl, a hat check girl. And unbeknown to him, she was married to a policeman who was working uh -huh. at the ball. His name was Friedman. He was, yeah. later became uh, Regan's bodyguard. So uh, Later became Regan's bodyguard? Regan's bodyguard. Really? Uh, yes. <laughs> so anyway... Uh, she had her husband's badge, so uh -huh. she, she said to Flynn, see, I'm a policeman, you better kiss me. So he's kidding, he says, okay, if you insist, he grabbed her and he kissed uh -huh. her. Beautiful girl. And he stole a badge. Okay. So her husband came and saw this whole scene, and he arrested, he arrested Errol Flynn for stealing a badge, uh -huh. which, of course, we beat. We beat the case. And it was thrown out of court, but it, it was a very serious thing. We had to go bail him out uh -huh. of jail. Hollywood. That, that was a funny case. Hollywood, in those days, Cyril's, LaRue's, Macambo's. That Trocadero. Strip, Trocadero. The strip was... Larry Finney's M.O.P.'s. Tell me about those days on the strip of Hollywood in the 40s and 50s. I mean, it well, must have been... That was glamour. That really was We didn't Hollywood. have any pimps on the street. We didn't have any whores on the streets in those days. Okay. Mm -hmm. If we did, we run them off. We didn't have any guys shooting up the streets except mm -hmm. for Mickey Corn occasionally at the Plymouth House when he got a gun battle. Right. Uh, we had real movie stars, not the ones that live in closets, you know. They lived in Hollywood, they lived in Beverly Hills, they lived at the studio club. Mm -hmm. They didn't live in uh, Santa Barbara, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they, they were Hollywood people. I love what you said before, we came into the green room, about John Wayne. About, he's ballsy guy. Ballsy. Ballsy. Him and Wayne Morris, 
John Carroll, Victor Jury, uh -huh. Flynn. These were all tough guys. You know, e even uh, Bogart. You know, the what you saw Edward was G. what Robinson. they were. Yeah, what you saw was what they were. They were themselves. Yeah, that. They, they were. They were. They, what you saw was what they actually were. Uh -huh. Made them. Made them stars. They were yep. individuals. That's they right. were there. They never wore an actor no. acting the role. They no, played they themselves were, at all times. They were tough. And the great actresses too, Kathy Hepburn. Yeah, tell me. I want to know about Spencer Tracy. I'm jumping now, but Spencer Tracy and Catherine. Well, probably the greatest love affair ever known to, to Hollywood. They were together for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was living on Doheny Drive. Mm -hmm. And someone who was a good friend of hers sold a story about her with photographs of yes. Spencer Tracy at the Confidential Magazine. Mm -hmm. and that, was a, that was a very big publication in those days. And so I was uh, asked to verify the story. I verified it. It was verifiable. But I asked the publisher not to uh, not not to print it, yep. because it was really truthfully was a fabulous love story. Uh -huh. There was nothing dirty about it. It was very dignified, very sophisticated, very quiet, and very honorable, even though he was married. And uh, <clears throat> and he did. He did not print the story. He respected the beauty of the love affair that those two had. She was very supportive of him. If he was on location, had a and started drinking, she would fly to be with him and to keep him on track, you know. Uh-huh. Fred Otesh live in Hollywood and Cannes? Can you live France. in Cannes? Yeah, I live in Cannes, France. Really? Six months a year. Six months. Travel back and forth. Yep. What are you doing now? You wrote a book. Yep. The book is wonderful. The yep. It's well, I've all got about another one. I've got another one. It's about your wonderful yep. files yep. on all the stars and yep. everyone. Well, there's a few that are. Rock Hudson's not in there. Rock Hudson. Yep. Yeah. Okay, you want to... People talked about Rock. Okay, we'll talk about it. Tell me yeah, about you know, Rock Hudson. Let me tell you something. People talked about Rock Hudson, okay? Yeah. And they, they assumed that Rock Hudson had a problem. He had a problem. Yeah. They assumed that. Okay. They didn't know that to be a fact. No, at that, at that Until time. Until he married Phyllis Gates. And when he married Phyllis Gates... That's when it all came out. <clears throat> and she wanted to get a divorce. She hired me. She hired you. And Arthur Crowley. Okay. Have you read a book? No. Go ahead. You never saw my name in a book, did you? Okay. Yeah, so Arthur Crowley's name in the book is yep. a very fine attorney. Okay. And I, I swore that I would never <clears throat> discuss her as a client of mine, so long as Greg Butzel was alive. Uh huh. And uh, he was her. He was a Rock Hudson's lawyer. I see. And I promised him that I would never discuss the Rock Hudson file. Huh. But he passed away about three weeks ago. So, so can you talk free, about it? I feel free to do that. Good. Yeah. I'd like to hear it. Well, I met Phyllis through Lewis and Moore, the writer. Right. And. Uh, and I met her at his house, and he was a friend of mine, and William Moore. And he said, you know, uh, she's a friend of my wife's, and she's having a problem. She's married to Rock Hudson, and uh, and there's a lot of threats going back and forth. And we like to establish this problem. And you know, now we're going back 30 years, okay? Mm -hmm. We're not going back a couple a couple of years. Yes. So this was 1958. Okay. Okay. And she was Henry Wilson's secretary, and it was Phyllis Gates. Mm -hmm. And Henry Wilson was Rock Hudson's manager. Right. So <clears throat> we worked out, a, we, we actually, I wrote a script like you have. Yes. On questions I wanted her to ask him, to draw information from right. him. And we wired up the house. You wired we, we his wired house? We wired up his house. She invited him home to dinner. And this is supposed to be America, free country. Yeah. Well, Wiring people's homes. A war blood drive. Okay, okay, Fred. See, that bothers me. That's why well, it just bothers me. I say alimony is legal blackmail. This country is not free. It just bothers me when wiring homes of people. But go ahead. <laughs> well, the CIA does. The FBI. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what LAPD I don't. Does. That's why I don't call America free. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. So anyway, we wired up the house, and we uh, she invited him to dinner. We cut a lot of tapes on our conversation with all his admissions and confessions and etc. Right. Which enabled her to get uh, ten years of alimony and uh, wind up with the house and the car and the furniture. Uh -huh. But you know, many times uh, when you hire an investigator, you're really hiring him to conspire with you to extort money from someone. Okay. Yes. Without my being involved as yes. an extortionist, because the information you compile <coughs> against the Rock Hudson enables her lawyer uh -huh. to use that as a weapon. Yes. To get what they want. Fred Otesh, would you, I mean, getting out of the Marines mm. as a young man, joining the, uh, the force, Los Angeles, mm. would you do it the same way, thinking back, looking back, would you do it the same way right now, looking back? Would well, you change your life a little different? No, I don't think so. I, I, the only thing I would have done differently is maybe study law. 
study law. Mm -hmm. So you're always been into Well, I've always been involved in law enforcement. In the Marine Corps, I was involved in intelligence. Uh, Married, are you? No. I'm divorced many, many years. Children? I have a daughter. Uh -huh. 39. 39. Mm -hmm. She uh, investigated her? I don't know where she is. She's running around somewhere. You don't her, know? In her camper. Oh, hey, that's good. Not a bad life. So you live here in, in Southern California yes. now. And you're doing some more uh, research on your book? Is that book coming? Uh, yeah, I've got a book coming out, and uh, it'll probably be out in about five or six months. It's, mm -hmm. got the, it's got the Kennedy file in it. And not only the Monroe Kennedy file, but the right. Kennedy file. The Kennedy. Uh, other situations. He was involved in, a, in, in, share, a, in another divorce case I had. Could you share one thing about the Kennedy family? Just one little file? Well, <clears throat> I, I was working for a man who has a restaurant in Palm Springs named Peter Fairchild. Are you familiar with Peter? No. We used to have a restaurant called Fairchild's on La Cienega. Uh, that I'm familiar with. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> and uh, he had uh, a mattress, was, a, was uh, his wife's son. Uh huh. And, uh, and we put mattress's wife under surveillance, so we established that she was having a relationship with Jack Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with Monroe. Completely different situation. And we use that as a basis uh, to not pay her any money. Really? Yes. Not the, and, and she was married to a man who's worth millions and millions and millions. But I've, I've How about James I, Dean? <clears throat> Let's get to James Dean. Shoplifter? Shoplifting. <laughs> uh, what he was, was that? Poor. He was poor. He was know? poor. Was sure. that shoplifting in Los Angeles at the time? The ranch market in Vine Street. Frank. Uh, the Hollywood Ranch Market. The Hollywood Market, Ranch on Vine Market on Vine. Sure. All the stars used to shoplift. That's right. I'd let them get away with it. You, you mean know? they all shoplift? Yeah, right, but if you steal caviar, I took offense to that, okay? Uh-huh. I don't mind you stealing bologna and a loaf and of you, bread. And you nailed James Dean at and the time and for shoplifting? And a few other actors, sure. Why would you do that, Fred? I mean, he just probably was hungry, the poor actor. He's well, the I Hollywood. Well, first, first off, you have to establish that he's hungry. I let him go. Oh, you did let him? Sure. Oh. Yeah. Who's some other stars? Like oh, God. <laughs> Scott Brady. <laughs> Scott Brady. Hey, Lawrence Turney. I had him on my show, his brother. Scott Brady. What a good actor. Good actor. Nice guy. Yeah. Drinks. I worked, Lef I worked a narcotic case for him. You did? Yeah. We beat it. Uh-huh. We beat it. The same men arrested him that arrested uh, Bob Mitchum. Mm. And we won the case. I got to ask you. You had the Hollywood Palladium. Uh, they I, did a show there, a movie called The Blues. Boy, uh, Brother Blues or what? Blues it? Brothers. Blues Brothers. You know, John Belushi. John Belushi. Got to ask you. Tell me. John Belushi. Well. And, come on, Fred. He, come on. You, you when, know he did. You when, caught him. When he was at the Palladium, yeah. you know, my security force was telling me that John was in the dressing room shoving coke up his nose. So uh, I had them bring him up to the office. And I said, you know, this place has a liquor license. And this place is not involved in any drugs, okay? So if you're going to continue shoving coke up your nose while we're shooting this movie, I want to shut the movie down. Uh -huh. I called up the producer of the Blues Brothers from the Universal, and I said, you know, uh, I'm not going to tolerate it. Yeah. Now, either you get him to get his act together and get him cleaned up, uh -huh. or I want to take him off the premise. And uh, they put somebody with him to keep him clean. Lana Turner. Tell me. Lana Turner. Lana Turner. Stefanato. I don't like to talk about it, but she, her daughter just wrote a new book out. Mm -hmm. New book. It's the book. You know her? Yep. You know the daughter? Yep. Hollywood. She's really a true Hollywood star. It really a star. We don't have a very glamorous... Very fine lady. Pardon me? I haven't seen her for a hundred years, but a very fine lady. Fine actress. Yeah. Fine lady. She's truly <clears> a movie <throat> star. We don't, have, we don't have movie stars like that, no. uh, do we, Fred? No more Kathy Hepburn's around. Or Lana or Turner. Betty Davis is a Lana Turner. Yes, right. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's a shame, but they're not. What, what what should Hollywood do right now, Frank? I mean, Fred, think about it. You're, you know, what should well, they do? There's no I Hollywood system I mean, anymore like that. Well, you used, to have, you used to have the star system, as you know. They you, go to school and Howard, study. Howard Hughes and I worked for him. We had all those little starlets on the surveillance. You know. And, you know, he put them on a contract for seven years with six-month options. Start them out at 150 bucks a week. and. Mm -hmm. In the next six months, increase him to 200. Uh -huh. But he had a guy named Johnny Myers who was his PR guy. So mm -hmm. Johnny Myers used to go through these girly magazines to right. see some beautiful girl. And he used to say, on page 14 of Peekaboo, there's a uh -huh. beautiful girl. Have Otash find her for me. 
a lot of casting call out there. Yeah. Girls had a oh, girls had to get always casting call. Lay there and just do their thing for a job. Yeah, but let me time. tell you something. We, when I was a policeman, we enforced that, you know. If, if we if we found out that there was a phony casting, we used to have send police women to make casting calls. Oh, I see. Good looking police women, and we used to send starlets to make uh -huh. casting calls, mm -hmm. and we'd wire them up. Mm -hmm. And if some guy came on to them I in see. that manner, we'd book them. Really? Yes. So you did it. So oh, sure. Tell me some friends. Some of your detective friends going back. You're in Hollywood now. Mm -hmm. They owe you little favors. Do they do you favors? They write a few. If it's not too far off. Uh -huh. If it's okay. You know, Fred Otesh picks up the phone and you know, Hollywood uh no, they, they can, shake. You they know, can pick up the phone too. Uh -huh. you know, it works both ways. Mm -hmm. you, you trade a hamburger for a steak sandwich. Wouldn't you trade a hamburger for a steak sandwich? Uh -huh. Of course. Nicky Blair's, a oh. popular restaurant in this town. I mean, One of my I favorites. I him the day he got in this town. You, you did? Sure. Tell me about Nicky. I like Nicky. He's a good friend. We had a lot of fun together. We, <clears throat> we were together when he had Stefanino's on the strip. Then uh -huh. he had his own little place where La Rouge used to be. Right. And, uh, uh -huh. and I introduced him to a lot of the Hollywood people. He introduced me to a lot of Hollywood people. Uh -huh. I have dinner there a couple of nights a week with Nicky. He came to Cannes and stayed in my apartment for five days last year. What does Fred Otash do in Cannes? I can't imagine you staying I check in the, I check the top of the beach every day. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> See what's new on the beach. When I get bored, I go to Central Bay and I check the nude beach. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's fun out there, isn't it? You speak the language? French? You nope. speak French? You don't speak I don't like the French. You don't like the French? They're rude. Yes, they're rude. <clears throat> I always say if there's another war, we're going to let the Germans keep them. <laughs> yep. Hollywood, Fred. You're from Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Small town, Massachusetts. Small town, little boy. Really? Yeah. But I learned hard. You I learned have... fast and hard in this town. Sinatra. Tell me about Sinatra. Great performer. Friends, uh, friends of the Kennedys and, uh -huh. and, and, and the Nixons and the Regans. Sat uh -huh. in the White House many times. Uh, <clears throat> has a very hard, hard life. Yes, right. He's a very good father. And a very charitable man who never turns down... He helps everybody. To help someone. I the love need. that man. Okay. I think need. he is the greatest... And in fact, Kitty Kelly called me when she wrote the book mm -hmm. and sent me a letter, and I refused to speak to her about it yes. because I, <clears throat> I think there was enough head bashing of the Sinatras in yep. the world. I mean, for what reason? People have no money. Their arms to say, helps poor people. He helps to say charities. Charities. He's yep. a wonderful human being. So does Sammy Davis. Sammy is wonderful. <coughs> That's They're all, so does know, Hollywood. Hollywood has a lot of <coughs> wonderful people in this town. Help. Of course they do. Not, you know, Hollywood, Hollywood can love make, this town for that. <coughs> Hollywood can make or break a presidency. You know that, don't you? Make, how is it? Make or break a presidency what do you mean by or a that? candidate. President. They can muster enough talent and enough money yes. on fundraisers to elect about anyone. I see. I think Lou Wasserman is the most powerful man in Hollywood. He is? I think so, personally. 